Hi Scorpio, welcome to your November 2017 astral update. It's Raina here. My gosh, Scorpio, I have redone this video so many times. I can't believe it. I don't know how come I keep starting over, but I do. Before I begin, I just want to state that this is a recording that is for Scorpio sun signs as well as rising signs, also known as ascendants in Scorpio. And it still is a general reading regardless because the degree of your sun or rising sign does matter when constructing a chart. Okay. And for instance, if you're if you're watching this and your sun sign is in Scorpio, your rising sign might be totally different. Okay. And that would change everything that I've just said. And a lot of people use the natal chart, which is dependent on the rising sign for uh, constructing their predictive um, reports. Okay. So take this as a general reading if you would like your natal chart read, check me out. The link is below and you will see how different it can be from having the sun in Scorpio to maybe having cancer rising or something like that. And everything changes. Having said that, I also want to wish all of you Scorpios a happy solar return whether you're born in October and you're listening or November when this reading is taking place. Okay. So happy birthday. Um, your new moon is on November 18th at 26 degrees of Scorpio. So if you're born around the 26 degree mark, um, you're having an exact conjunction with that, which is so cool because that could be a, this could be a very significant year for you if you're actually born at the 26th degree mark of Scorpio, but it's going to be great for all of you. Now, typically when you have the sun come back into your sign, solar return, it's usually a time when you start to feel like much more amazing because the sun energizes you before that period for a month, your sun, the sun is in the 12th house. Okay. So it's in Libra. It's, you're kind of feeling that hibernation phase where you just want to kind of hole up, maybe not be too social, maybe be more reflecting, uh, during this period of time in the universal chart, the 12th house is Pisces and its ruler um, is Neptune. So it's all about dreaming. It's all about the psychic realm realms. <laughs> And it's not anything practical or substantial. So, and when I say substantial, I don't mean, you know, meaningful. I mean, you know, five senses type of um, tangible. Let's put it that way. Okay. So you do have Mars in this sector all, months lo all month long in Libra. Okay. And Mars is our drive our get up and go. So because of this, I believe I maintain that you come roaring into your full self, not necessarily in November or even in December, but more like uh, January. And I'll tell you why. Mars is going to go into Scorpio in December, I believe it's December 7th. So when Mars goes into your sign, yes, you will feel energized. However, it's going to be during a Mercury retrograde. So you may be chomping at the bit to do something, but also it's a holiday season, right? December 7th, you know, a lot of people are out of town doing things. They're not going to be available. So if you're trying to launch something, it probably wouldn't even be the best time then anyhow. Uh, but if you feel really drawn to do something in December, by all means, go for it. Even if it's during Mercury retrograde, I'm just saying that given these other factors, 
you may find that January is much more conducive for you feeling that sense of forward momentum. And this is also because Saturn is leaving your second house of earned income and going into your third house of social media, all forms of communication, learning, maybe teaching and things like that in the sign of Capricorn. For Scorpio, Capricorn is a friendly angle because it's a sextile. So while people like to demonize Saturn in a sign, it can have a very grounding, substantial and long range influence on your life. And I'm going to give a personal example in my life. I'm a sun in Sagittarius. Okay. So Saturn has been in my sign for the last two and a half years. Now I have had an amazing past two and a half years. I would say, I dare say the most significant in my whole lifetime. And I'm not, I mean, Sagittarians are prone to exaggeration, but there you go. Um, did I take advantage of Saturn being in my sign? Maybe. I mean, I heard other astrologers talking about it. I have only been doing YouTube um, for two years and a few months, okay? This kind of dovetails with uh, Saturn in my sign. And it has been quite an amazing journey. If I were to, if I had, were not a person doing this and I were just reading random comments on the internet from other Sagittarians, I've read so many comments where they said it was terrible. I can't wait till Saturn leaves Sagittarius. And they have had a rough patch. My feeling is that when you have a certain mindset, you can capitalize on any transit, even if it is considered challenging and make amazing things happen with it. Okay. So how has Saturn in your second house been for you with your earned income, Scorpio? Has it been challenging? Has it been a blessing? Have you, have you been able to nail down your finances? Have you been able to create income streams that are going to serve you for years to come? Saturn will not be in this sector for another 30 years. So you can breathe a sigh of relief, but if you're somebody who has found that it has been a, an organizing, a disciplined influence in your life, this is something that you're, you are, you may be sad to see it go. I don't know. But now it's going into your third house. So this can benefit you, especially if you have been kind of dreaming of doing social media in some way. For instance, starting a YouTube channel and being a, uh, a content creator. The reason I'm particularly focusing on that is because with Jupiter in your first house now, uh, Jupiter is, is currently in Scorpio and will be for another year you have the benefit of and you will have the influence of your persona being expanded okay so you can an expansion can mean that you promote yourself on a bigger stage and the internet it doesn't get much bigger than that does it you have thousands, potential thousands, or who knows, in some cases, millions of people who are tuning in to you and listening to what you have to say. So if that is something that appeals to you, jump on that wave in the next year. And as I say, I believe that after Mercury, especially it goes out of its shadow, and then Saturn has gone into Capricorn on December 20th. So looking at January, it's like full system ahead or was it a full, <laughs> something like that full sales ahead. I don't know. Um, 
Until then, you may be tying up loose ends. You may be kind of planting those seeds around that full moon, uh, around that new moon on the 18th, not just coming up with ideas for the next few months, but for the next year, Scorpio. So let's talk about that full moon in Taurus, because as I've I have the feeling that some Scorpios are dealing with an affair. Before I continue, please uh, do not lecture me on making light of infidelity. That's not what I do. Just because I mention these particular influences does not mean that I condone that type of behavior, but I'm not going to preach. I believe that everyone has to figure things out on their own timetable and being, you know, moralizing just puts people off. And it also is not, it's kind of a simplistic way of dealing with things. What is happening for Scorpio is that you have been having Venus in the 12th house since October and going into November for the first week. Venus in the 12th house can be having a love affair that you have to sneak around. So typically we would say that either you're married or the other person is married. Yeah, or, you know, the equivalent of marriage also. They have a partner, you have a partner, you both have partners. Mars is there all month long. Mars is your libido. So it can speak to the physical side of a relationship, the sexual side. Venus is the love. Now it could be you beginning this, you know, as when, when Venus went in there in October, that might've been the start. Maybe it's somebody from your past, even maybe it's a twin flame situation, but in that case, it may not have anything to do with infidelity. It may just be that you are, because the 12th house is the karmic house, the spiritual, the, the reincarnation thing happening. So this can be a twin flame situation, a soulmate situation where somebody from your past is coming in and is definitely influencing, um, your life in that way, but it's also getting physical with Mars there. And this can complicate your life to say the least. So enter the full moon on November 4th. And what does that mean? That could mean that revelations come out, secrets are revealed, you may get exposed if you're the one that's doing the cheating, and you are involved in a committed partnership yourself. That person may find out some way, you may just decide to tell them. You may come clean because you do want to tie up those loose ends and you do want to move on with your life. Not to say that this person that you've been having an affair with is necessarily somebody that you're going to end up with because you may decide that that person isn't right for you either, but that person may be a catalyst for you understanding that your committed partnership is not what you want it to be and you don't think it really has a chance. The full moon though can be a time of abundance. I tend to think of full moons as very magical times and very fertile times and a very creative times. So do not think that if you have a full moon in the seventh house of relationship, that it's going to be something bad. It could be you're dealing with your twin flame. Maybe it's somebody from your high school years or your college years that has come back into your life after many years. And you say, you know what, let's just, let's just get married. You know, what's all this running around? Let's just get married. And then the full moon is your commitment to that person. It's like coming full circle. So it can be many things to many different people. But I just wanted to put that out there because there could be something that you're dealing with, with a committed relationship, as well as another relationship is in the mix. 
And basically, what I see for you, Scorpio, is that you're going to have, I think you're going to have a lot of idealism with love because Neptune has been retrograde in your fifth house. And this can be kind of brutal because you may be feeling a little bit um, like harsh treatment from the universe in recent months, maybe since June, if you, if, especially if you've been on the dating scene, you may have felt like all the illusions that you had about love were stripped bare. Maybe you just had like one lousy relationship after the other, or a relationship that you were beginning just was really showing itself to be not good. And that just about destroyed you and your um, sense of belief in love in the first place. But Neptune is going direct on November 22nd. So it's try it's time to dream again. It's time to heal from those kinds of harsh realities that we're all faced with. And because Neptune is in Pisces and it's at a friendly angle to Scorpio. You can really vibe with what Neptune and Pisces is all about. And it does make you much more idealistic. Um, just a word to those of you who may be born in the mid sixties who have Saturn in Pisces. And this is something that I have um, <laughs> just found out about because I was just looking at my own stuff. I was born in 1965 and um, Neptune, uh, the transiting Neptune is right on top of our natal Saturn in Pisces. So that can definitely be very disorientating or is it disorienting, disorientating, whatever. That can be very confusing. And I noticed that it went exact for me around the first week of October. And it's going to be exact at the 11 degree mark until um, early January. So if you've been feeling a bit muddled lately, it could be because of this. And hopefully, um, well, I don't know, because when, when, uh, Neptune goes direct. I don't know if that's going <laughs> to enhance things or make them more muddled. But just understand that, again, just like with the Saturn transit, we can make a lot of headway with all of these long-term transits if we approach them in the right way. And if we're conscious about it happening, if we know that we have transiting Nep uh, Neptune in conjunction with our natal Saturn or any, you know, actually any planet, if you have a planet around 11 degrees of any mutable sign, so that would be, it could either be in Pisces, it could be in Gemini or Virgo or Sagittarius, this will affect you either with an opposition or a conjunction or a square, okay? And that will be a challenging thing for you. Even the conjunction can be challenging. So just a heads up about that. But I think that having Neptune in the fifth house can be beautiful. And if you're an artist, Scorpio, forget about it. You are so inspired um, that it's not even funny. So anyway, and as I said, you have that new moon on the 18th in your sign. So that will be great as well. So I hope that you enjoyed this, Scorpio. Again, if you'd like a private reading, um, I have natal chart interpretations. Please um, click below. It'll take you to my online store. Otherwise, have a happy solar return. Take care. Bye.